10 common money mistakes you must avoid if you want to succeed. Simply put, there are two types of people, those who make money and those who lose it. We understand that no one's perfect, especially when it comes to managing finances. So if you're in the second category, we won't blame you. You're not alone, whether you've got mountains of debt or parted above budget. Instead, we'll share with you 10 money mistakes people make that put them in this class. We can argue that maintaining wealth is much more difficult than acquiring it. It's not unusual to see wealthy individuals who earn their riches through inheritance, the lottery, or other unanticipated means lose them quickly. Mike Tyson, a well-known boxer, is an excellent example of someone who made an absurd amount of money but lost it all. Despite having made over $300 million in his career, he declared bankruptcy in 2003 and was reportedly $20 million in debt. What about the greatest pop star, Michael Jackson, who owed about $500 million at the time of his death? The list goes on. So what are the most common money mistakes? And how can you bounce back after a less than amazing financial decision? Stay with us to find out. By the way, welcome to Skillset. We are a group crazy about seeing you educated about finance, business, marketing and money. But we promise to keep entertaining you. So kindly like and share this video if you find it helpful. Also smash that subscribe button for more videos like this. Okay, let's discuss some of the most common financial blunders you must avoid if you don't want to wake up broke one day. Avoiding these mistakes could be the breach between life and death for you, even if you already have financial problems. 10 Common Money Mistakes You Must Avoid Number 1. You're spending more money than you earn. Especially as a young adult, it can be tempting to do this. As soon as you graduate from college and start earning a steady paycheck for the first time, it can be tempting to waste your money. Buying that new car, moving into a new home, and traveling first class are all things we want eventually. But if your salary is inadequate to pay for these expenses, you will likely find yourself living paycheck to paycheck. This problem is comparable to lifestyle inflation, where a rise in income leads to increased living expenses. However, most people believe they should treat themselves whenever they are paid, even if an increase in income shouldn't justify an increase in your cost of living. Instead, you should use this income stream to invest and buy assets to help you preserve your wealth. The desire to impress others is most likely the main push for people who spend beyond their means. They spend because they have low self-esteem and without these financial possessions, feel inferior to other people. But this is the wrong way to think if you want to gain financial freedom. As Dave Ramsey put it, we spend money on things we don't need to impress people we don't like. Truth be told, this is something many of us do. You will progress financially once you learn to put off gratification and stop worrying about impressing others. Another reason for excessive spending is social media. People spend a lot of money attempting to appear wealthy, even though they are not. A typical example of someone falling into the trap of trying to impress others is an internet entrepreneur who, after being told he would never succeed in business, decides to buy a high-end car when he makes his first significant sale. This is a never-ending ladder of impressing people. There will always be those to compete with or brag to throughout life. When your monthly income is only $3,000, you have no business buying a $2,000 gadget. Be shrewd. Make a budget and track your expenditures to ensure you don't go beyond. Number two, having no emergency fund. Let's face it, things don't always work out the way you plan, and sometimes you need money to get things back on track. For instance, your washer could break down, your car could stop suddenly working, or God forbid, you could lose your job. Since almost everything in life is expensive, it is essential to have an emergency fund set aside. Sadly, a 2019 Federal Reserve survey revealed that nearly 40% of American adults couldn't afford to cover a $400 emergency with cash or a credit card charge that they could quickly pay off. A little over 27% of those polled said that they would have to sell something or borrow money to come up with a $400, and an additional 12% said they would not be able to pay it. Fortunately, you do not have to be one of these people. Simply save your dollars. To automatically transfer a part of your income into an emergency savings account, you can ask your employer to set up a 10% automatic deduction from your paycheck. But how can you tell when your savings are enough? Many financial experts advise saving up to six months' worth of expenses. But if you want to be especially careful, one year's worth is a terrific target to make. Number 3. 
living off credit cards. It has become very normal for people to use credit cards to pay for necessities. But even if a rising number of people are ready to pay double-digit interest rates on petrol, food, and a variety of other products that are gone long before the bill is paid in full, doing so is not a good idea from a financial standpoint. The cost of these items increases substantially because of credit card interest charges, so using credit occasionally may result in you spending more than you make. Number 4. Buying a new car Although few buyers have the means to buy a brand new car outright, millions do so each year. But not being able to pay cash for a new car doesn't necessarily indicate that you can't afford it. After all, having enough money for the payment is not the same as having enough money for the car. Besides, the consumer increases the gap between the worth of the car and the amount paid for it by paying interest on a depreciating asset when they borrow money to buy a car. Even worse, many people lose money trading in their vehicles every two to three years. Sometimes you might have no choice but to procure a loan to buy a car. But do you really need a big SUV? Such cars are pricey to buy, insure and fuel. It might be unnecessary to buy an SUV unless you tow a boat or trailer or need one for work. Consider getting a car that consumes less gas and costs less to maintain and insure if you need to buy one, even if you have to borrow money for that. The cost of a car can be high, and if you buy more than you need, you might be wasting money that could be saved or used to repay your debt. Number 5. Overspending on your home Bigger isn't always better when it has to do with buying a new home. If you don't have a large family, Choosing a 6,000 square feet house would mean higher taxes, maintenance, and utility costs for you. Do you really want to eat up such a sizable chunk of your monthly budget over the long term? Think about it. Number 6. Only having one source of income. A single source of income, typically a salary, is a way of life for many people. But unfortunately, despite popular belief, jobs are not always secure. Did you know that in 2018, more than 21 million Americans lost their jobs? For people whose job was their only source of income, their income abruptly stopped. How scary is that? You must see yourself as a tree when considering your income sources. Do trees produce fruit on just one branch? No. Different branches produce flowers and fruits, and so should you. To make your income work for you, you should continue to grow and gain new skills. Try investing your money to earn passive income. This way, you can get at least some shut-eye at night. Number 7. Living paycheck to paycheck The household personal savings rate in the US was 9.4% in June 2021. A problem that comes up unexpectedly could quickly become a catastrophe if you are unprepared, especially if you live paycheck to paycheck. People who consistently overspend find themselves in a dangerous situation where one missed paycheck could leave them broke. They depend on every dollar they make. You don't want to be found in that situation when an economic downturn happens, like the current recession. A lot of financial advisors would advise you to conserve three months' worth of expenses in an account that's easy to access. If you run out of money due to a job loss or economic changes, it could put you in a lot of debt. You don't want that. Three months' worth of breathing room could mean the difference between keeping and losing your home. Number 8. Failure to invest for retirement If you don't get your money to work for you in the stock market or through other investments that generate income, you'll never be able to retire. An excellent retirement is dependent on making monthly contributions to specified retirement funds. Use your employer-sponsored retirement plan or tax-deferred retirement savings. Know how long it will take for your investments to grow and how much risk you can take. If possible, seek the advice of a seasoned financial consultant to match this with your objectives. Number 9. Using savings to settle debts If your debt is costing you 7% of your income, but your retirement account is receiving 19%, you might think that switching the retirement for the debt will mean you pocketing the difference. But it's not that easy. It is pretty challenging to repay those retirement savings, and you risk being charged exorbitant fees, besides losing the benefit of compounding. Borrowing from your retirement account might be an option if you approach it with the right mentality, but even the most diligent planners struggle to put money aside to rebuild these funds. The urgency to repay the debt typically disappears once it has been paid off, and you might go back into debt since it will be very tempting to keep spending at the same rate. So if you want to pay off your debt with savings, you must continue to live as though you still owe your retirement fund money. Number 10. Invest money rather than save. Thanks to inflation, money that is kept in a bank gradually loses value. 
But when cash is intelligently invested, it increases in value. It's really that easy. The error many people make is avoiding financial risks. Those who hoard all their money and let it slowly depreciate over time fall under this category. But the only funds you should keep in a savings account are those needed for daily spending and emergencies. In other words, you must save for investments rather than simply saving. Without a real plan, all money saved will wind up being spent on unimportant things. For instance, if you keep money in your bank, you might be tempted to spend it on material things like entertainment, a new car or new clothes. Instead, you should invest that money to make it work for you. All of these opportunities, whether in the shape of stocks, real estate or startups, offer a means for you to create a new source of income for yourself. What's more, they are significantly more financially rewarding than allowing your money to lose value while it's kept in a bank. Start keeping an eye on the minor expenses that add up quickly to avoid the risk of overspending. Then move on to keep an eye on the larger expenses. Consider your options carefully before adding any more debt to your list of debts. Remember that just because you can pay for something doesn't mean you can afford that thing. In addition to investing time in creating a solid financial plan, make saving a portion of your income a monthly goal. We hoped you enjoyed this video. Got any questions? What do you think we missed? What money mistakes have you been avoiding? Kindly use the comment section below. We can't wait to hear from you. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button as we bring you more videos like this. Till next time, ciao.